If you're not trying to increase the number of books that you buy and ship to Amazon on a weekly basis, it's gonna be really hard for you to increase your sales. What's going on everybody? It is Manny and I am back with another video. Haven't posted in a while, but since the last time I posted, we've been through a fourth quarter and we've been through a January textbook rush. But of course, now that we're done with January textbook rush, going into the months of February and March are traditionally among the slowest times of the year for the average bookseller. I would probably say that February and March are as slow as right around the time in October where sales start to dip after the August, September textbook rush. So in this video, I want to give you three tips that you can implement today. Three actionable steps that can help you increase sales almost immediately. Tip number one for increasing your sales, you got to buy more books. Now, if you're a bookseller, here's a couple of things that you can do to make sure that you're maximizing how many books you're sourcing and shipping on a weekly basis. Now, if you're struggling to find enough books or you're just not getting as many as you can handle on a weekly basis, one of the first things that you can do is travel a little more for your books. Depending on how far you're willing to travel away from your home, you could expand your trade area map. Now, a couple of years ago, I made a video on how you can net $100,000 as a bookseller. I'm going to go ahead and put it in the information card above, but what's really important is that a lot of the basic principles have not changed. In that video, I discuss about how if I'm going to cherry pick books or if I'm going to go to stores, one of the main things that I can really expect is that I'm going to do a bunch of traveling and I'm going to put a lot of miles on my car. Now, one of the big things that I will do is I'll go to a book sale. A book sale could be two to three hours away if it's worth it. And then I will start hitting thrift stores. I'll hit consignment shops, whatever it is that I see. And I'll start building a trade area map. I'll try to hit new places and try to build on available sources. So to source more books, you may have to travel a little bit further than you normally would. Another thing that you can do to source more books is evaluate how it is you're sourcing them. If you believe that you strictly find your books through library sales and thrift shops, there's a lot of opportunities that you're leaving behind. If you want to source more books, you have to give yourself more avenues in which to find them. So things like Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, things like rummage sales, uh, estate sales especially, do not overlook these ways of finding highly profitable material. Those of us who live in cold weather, we don't get to see a lot of garage sales, but come April, end of March, we're gonna start seeing garage sales popping up as well, and you don't wanna ignore those either. And the last tip as far as sourcing books, re-examine your personal criteria for buying a book. I know that a lot of you out there have an extremely strict set of guidelines for sourcing books. I've heard I won't buy a book unless I can make $10 on it. Just understand that you will find profitable books. You just won't find very many. And a lot of times you're leaving $5 bills, $8 bills behind because of a very strict criteria. Double check your criteria and make sure that you're setting yourself up for success because there are some very fast sellers that will sell as soon as they hit the warehouse and you'll make five, six dollars on that you're leaving behind. So make sure that that's what you want to be doing. Tip number two for increasing your sales today has to do with repricing. You need to reprice and you need to reprice very often. This doesn't mean that you need to have an automated repricer, but you definitely need to have a plan. If you're not repricing your inventory periodically, then you're allowing your inventory to become stale you're allowing competition to come in and overtake you on price and quality, whatever it is your criteria is for listing a book. If you don't reprice often and keep your price fresh and keep it competitive, you're just giving the market way too much time to catch up with you. Now, as far as automated repricers, you can certainly get an automated repricer, but that's something that I would absolutely look at if I had a thousand items in my inventory or more. Or in other words, whenever you get to the point where you cannot reprice your inventory on a weekly basis, it's time to look at a tool that can help you. But if you are going to get an automated repricer, 
I still highly suggest you look at reprice it for the value. It gives you what you need to automate your repricing. Even though there will be some blind spots, every repricer is going to have those to a certain extent. But the bottom line is have a plan. In particular, have a plan for your inventory that is becoming aged, getting closer to that one year mark. Make sure that those are items you still want to have in your inventory and don't be afraid to get more aggressive with the pricing just to get those items off your books. Now I promised you three tips and here's the third. If you really want to make more money and you want to make money right away, you can't be afraid to diversify. We talk about this all the time, but diversifying, it means a lot of different things. First way you can diversify, particularly with Amazon, is to sell in other categories. I'm not afraid to diversify this way. I go out to stores, I cherry pick books, but when it comes to CDs, I have CDs delivered to my home, I work out of my garage, I do bulk. It really helps me to diversify not just my inventory, but really to supplement how much inventory I'm getting into the warehouse on a weekly basis. If tip number one was all about buying books and getting them into that warehouse, Tip number three with diversifying your inventory is really going to go a long way towards making sure that you're constantly supplying that warehouse with sellable goods. So you can diversify into other categories on Amazon, but here's something even more important if you really just want to be a bookseller. Diversifying onto other platforms. I can't tell you enough what eBay has done for my business. But besides eBay, there's other ways. You can sell them locally. You can sell them on OfferUp, Mercari. You can sell them on Facebook Marketplace. The trick is to always have a place where you can sell really good inventory that you find. If you're only selling on Amazon, there's gonna be a lot of times where you find something that's perfectly sellable and you gotta walk away from it. Now, if our goal is to grow a business and during the slower months continue to generate a paycheck and cash flow that helps us to grow in the spring, you can't walk away from profit. So diversify onto other platforms so that you can sell things on eBay or otherwise that you can't sell on Amazon. There's going to be some of us that have textbook restrictions and instead of having to worry about whether or not you can sell a book on Amazon, you buy it and if you can't sell it there, you can always sell it on eBay. You can't sell bundles of books on Amazon, but you can sure do really well with book lots on eBay as well. So just remember that if you're going to diversify, you can diversify with categories, but you should also be diverse as far as the different platforms that you sell on. So just to summarize, if you want to grow your business, if you want to make more money starting today, you need to find more books and ship them to the warehouse. You need to reprice those books often and reprice them correctly. And you need to diversify. You need to either start selling into other categories so you can ship more stuff into the warehouse, or you need to be willing and unafraid of selling your books on other platforms besides Amazon. But here's the question of the day. What are you doing to increase your sales? Are you selling just on Amazon? Are you selling just books? Have you branched out into other platforms? Go ahead and put in your comments below because I'm always looking for ideas. Well, that's all for today's video, folks. If you enjoyed this video and you want me to make more videos like this one, please remember to share, like, and subscribe to support the channel. If you haven't already done so, go ahead and hit that like button. And if you're not subscribed, go ahead and tap on that book bag right there. And while you're in there, make sure you turn those bell notifications on so that you get a notification every time I drop a new video. Until next time, let's go make some money.